Hello, for this video lesson we are going to look at how to write an equation of the line. Again, this should be review for you guys, so hopefully we can fly through it pretty quickly. So lines are generally written in one of two ways. y equals mx plus b is known as slope y-intercept form, or ax plus by plus c equals zero, which is standard form. So most often we will see y equals mx plus b being used. And this is helpful in this format because when we have it this way, we know the slope and the y-intercept of the line. So m represents the slope of our line. It's always the number in front of the x when we have our equation in this format. And the b represents our y-intercept. So for the first set of examples, determine the equation of the line given its slope and y-intercept. So if we have a line that has a slope of negative 4 and a y-intercept of negative 5, we simply substitute the slope in for m and substitute the y-intercept in for b. So the equation here would be y equals our m value times x plus b. Since the b is negative, we can just write minus 5. Take a minute here, pause the video, and jot down the other three equations for number two, three, and four. And then come back and check your answer. So here we are with the other three equations written out. You can just see the slope substituted for m in front of our x. Make sure you're not forgetting to include the x in each equation. As well, make sure you have the y equals at the front. For the last one, threw a little trick in there with that y-intercept. We wouldn't write plus zero at the end, we would just leave it off and eliminate it altogether. One other scenario that's not shown here is if the slope was zero, if it was a horizontal line, we would have a zero in front of the x plus whatever our y-intercept is. And in that case, that would be gone altogether. All right, so moving along to the set of examples number two. So determine the equation of the lines given its slope and a point. So we know we have a line with a slope of three and it passes through the point one, negative two. What we're missing here is that b value, or our y-intercept. So just like normal, we're going to take y equals mx plus b, substitute our slope in, since we know that value, and when we're given this additional point, this is just an xy coordinate. So we're going to simply borrow the x and y value and substitute into our equation. Be careful here, because the y value does come second in our coordinate, but it's first in our equation. So we substituted negative 2, three times our x value, so I put it in brackets so we remember to multiply. Simplify three times one. And then we're just going to solve the equation for b. So to get this b by itself, we've got to get rid of the three, get it onto the other side, and the way we do that is just by subtracting three from both sides. So minus three here, and minus three here. So we end up getting b equals negative two minus three, which is negative five. Once you have your y-intercept, we write our equation by substituting in the slope, substituting in the y-intercept. Notice as well the variables x and y come back. We were just borrowing this point to determine that y-intercept. Example number six, we have a fraction for our slope. So this makes it a little more challenging in that we have to remember how to work with fractions. So we substitute in our slope like normal, then we're going to borrow this x comma y coordinate and substitute those values in. So we get negative 1 equals negative 2 thirds times negative 4 plus b. Remembering, of course, whole numbers are always over 1. So the multiplying is nice and easy. We multiply our tops, we get positive 8. Multiply our bottoms, we get positive 3 plus b. We need to get rid of this 8 thirds now, just like we did in the previous question. So I'm going to subtract 8 thirds from the right and do it as well on the left. So I get negative 1 minus 8 thirds equals b. To subtract, we need common denominators. So negative 1 is the same as negative 3 over 3. We have to make that denominator the same by multiplying the top and the bottom. Negative 3 minus 8 is negative 11. Denominator stays the same, and we now have our y-intercept. So to final, finalize this, we write the equation y equals your slope times x plus your y-intercept, which is a negative, so we have minus 11 over 3. 
So I'd like you now to pause the video and try example number seven and example number eight and then come back for the solutions. So pause now. So welcome back to the video. So I want to see what you guys have now for number seven and eight. Checking your answers with mine here. Substituting your slope, substituting your coordinate, and solving for that y-intercept. So you should have positive 24 for your y-intercept for number seven. Number eight is a special line. Slope of zero means it's a horizontal line. So you'll notice if we follow the same steps as usual, what happens here when we multiply zero by x is we get zero and we get negative two for the y-intercept. So it was a nice simple calculation there. But another way, if you recognize it's a special line, I like to draw a quick little sketch. If you know it passed it through to point five, negative two, and you know it's horizontal, you can quickly determine that y-intercept based on that coordinate, and we know that it's going to be negative two. So you'll see for the final equation, we don't include the zero x, zero times any number will always be zero. So this piece gets eliminated from our equation, and the equation of a horizontal line is just y equals the y-intercept. All right, we've got two more questions to do as examples and two more for you to try. So flipping to the next page. One step further, determine the equation of the lines given two points. So in this case, I don't know m and I also don't know b. First thing we're gonna have to do here is go back to our review lesson from yesterday and calculate the slope of each line. So we're gonna grab y2, negative four, minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Simplify this up. We get negative three on the top and negative one on the bottom. Negative divided by a negative is always positive and three over one is just three. So we've got our slope. Now, just like we did on the last examples, we're gonna grab our equation, y equals, our slope times x plus our intercept, and now we need to borrow a coordinate. It really doesn't matter which one you pick, but whatever you pick with, stick with. So y is negative one, x is six, and then we're going to solve this equation for b. So negative one equals 18 plus b. Subtract b on both sides, and we get, sorry, subtract by 18 on both sides, and we get b is negative 19. And now we're ready to write the equation. Final answer, y is equal to 3x minus 19. Question 10 tells us two points, but they don't give us the coordinates. They tell us the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So really quickly on a little sketch here, our line is going to cross the x-axis at positive four. As a coordinate, that is four comma zero. Our y-intercept crosses the y-axis at negative six, and as a coordinate, that is zero, negative six. So we're gonna use those to help us find the slope. Of course, in this case, we already have our b value, so we won't need to do that second piece. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Negative six over negative four. Reduced to lowest terms, negative divided by a negative is positive and we could divide top and bottom by two. So our, slopes is, our slope is negative, sorry, three halves. So our equation, y equals three over two x, y-intercept minus six, that's it. So pause the video here, try example 11 and 12 on your own, and then come back to check your answer. So pause now, please. All right, welcome back to the video. So let's check your answers. So number 11, the slope, three halves. Now if you got the slope wrong, your y-intercept is most likely gonna be wrong as well. So you substitute those numbers in, y-intercept is positive 17. You'll notice here as well, when I did this multiplication step, multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms, you get negative 18 over two, but that can easily be divided, giving me negative nine, saving me all that fraction work here. Coming over to number 12, I also want you to just check out this multiplication step. So negative one, times six is negative six over four, but I just simply reduce that fraction right off the bat. It's gonna make it a little easier when I move it over to not work with bigger numbers. So I added my three halves, common denominator to simplify it up. And there's your answer, y equals negative one over four x minus seven halves. 
and that is it for today.